Okay, so this is the Apple's iPhone 13. Let's start this video with the pricing. Because in about two weeks, the iPhone 14 will be out and the price affects the buying decision a lot. So for now, the 13 is available at about $650 and the regular 14 might come at $799. And after the 14 is launched, we might see another $100 discount on the 13, which makes the difference of $250. And in India, the 13 is already discounted to 65,000 on Flipkart ahead of 14's launch, which makes the deal even more compelling. So let's start with the design. This is a very well-built phone, but the caveats remain. Let me explain. This might be the first time that Apple went thicker and heavier on their flagships, which is a great deal to a lot of people, especially to the tech community, that they are listening to the consumers and acting on it rather than being stubborn. There are some great improvements just because of this little thickness and weight. We'll get back to it in the later part of the video. This phone looks very industrial and just a standard iPhone. I would still say that I like the 12's camera setup better than this diagonal camera setup, but then I don't know if they could have put the sensor shift stabilizer here. This is the second year of the flat design, which is okay. There aren't many types of sides. Hot take, I like the curved edges of iPhone 10 more than the flat one. First of all, it gives a much better grip and just feels good in the hand. It doesn't poke in your hand much. I wish we had a choice if we want a flat side or a curved one. Yes, I know, that is too much to ask. And also when we had curved edges, the screen just melted into the sides making the gestures seamless, better feeling than the flat edges. But this is very subjective, it's normal to like any type. But it's just that reviewers make it look like, oh my god, flat edges were all that we needed. The little drawback with the aluminium rails remain, which is there on all the smartphones including the Androids. While not using the case if the phone is dropped, it gets a small dent in the edges. Which is not the case with the Pros, but it's not like the Pros are dent proof, but can handle drops much better because of stainless steel. And this year again, Apple did not give a matte color option to the regular iPhones. I mean, come on Apple, it's just a color. I think that's enough talk about the design. So the 14s will have the same flat edge design and the notch, but the 14 Pros will have a pill-shaped cutout. I'm not so convinced with this dual cutout because it's very distracting. They should have gone for a bigger pill in my opinion. Now let's move to the display. So the iPhone 13 has 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display, which is HDR10 certified and Dolby Vision certified. 800 plus nits of sustained brightness and 1200 nits of peak brightness. Yes, the display is still 60 hertz. Why Apple? Why? At least you could have given 90 hertz, which I consider to be a sweet spot in phones considering battery and smoothness. But no, this has only a 60 hertz panel. Other than the refresh rate, everything is top notch. Speaking of which, they have narrowed down the notch than the 12. But the notch is a little bit deeper than on 12, which is definitely not acceptable. It cuts through 18 is to 9 content ever so slightly. Yes, it looks very ugly and yes, you'll get used to it sooner or later. Other than that, the display is very bright with a peak of 1200 nits when watching HDR content and being a 1080p, it's fine for a normal consumer who doesn't pixel peep and the colors are very, very nicely calibrated. Also, this little feature on the iPhones that when you view HDR photos or videos in the gallery, the photo's bright areas are given that extra nits which makes the photo looks more lively. For a general consumer, there is literally no issue with the display, but for geeks like us, refresh rate, deeper notch, 1080p are some of the pressure points. One more thing about the display. I have found Apple's OLED displays to be more durable than Samsung's even though I know that Samsung is the one supplying them with the display. And maybe I know why. So what I mean by durability is that I have seen many Samsung flagships having a green line issue, which has been an issue since ages. I had it on my S6 Edge, my friend had it on, on his S9 Plus, then my aunt's S10 had another issue where the screen colors were almost faded. Then we had to get a re screen replacement. Maybe that's because of the curved panel, but that's just a wild guess. But Samsung phones do have this issue. I mean, I have seen it on many devices that too flagship and yet to find an iPhone 10 that has a screen burn in or green line or even color fade. 
Sammy should do something about it. It's been years and credit where it's due, Apple has maintained display issues at a distance even though they do not manufacture them. Kudos to them. Let's move to the performance. So this time Apple is getting away with the same chip in the regular 14 series as the 13 Pros. So if you aren't thinking of the 14 Pros, you are looking at the same chip as 13 Pros in the 14. Yet another reason to get the 13 when it's discounted than the 14. Obviously this performs great, very slick software and very little bugs. See there are bugs in every software, but at least they iron it out with every update and improve the stability. Plus, I have this theory that iOS traits are growing towards Android and Androids are getting traits of iOS. So basically, it's just a matter of choice. Most of the social media apps run great with the best set of features on iPhone, but the Snapchat doesn't support wide-angle camera on iPhone, but it does allow it on Samsung's flagships. Basically, I feel that iOS is a little bit boring overall, but it definitely doesn't mean that it lacks features that get the work done. Just that they haven't even refreshed their icons since iOS 7. But all we can say about the software is that it just works. They have added some new set of features like focus modes, but I don't know, I haven't used them ever, except the do not disturb mode. Things are very incremental at this point, but it's good that they are still not stagnant. iOS is trying to give fun elements like widgets, which for me personally are a joke because they aren't interactive. If you touch them, they'll open the app, that's it. But yes, with time maybe we will get interactive widgets and also for me, this is the worst app drawer I have ever seen. Like I don't see myself using it anytime, they might even remove it. But okay, still the OS smoothly delivers on all the work one can expect from a phone. So basically you will be very happy with the software and performance and you might not even think about it, it's that great. In Geekbench, the iPhone 13 scores 1700 and multi-core 4600 and the iPhone 12 scored 1550 plus and in multi-core 3800 plus. This chip is fabricated at TSMC's, which is the best the world has for now. This TSMC fabrication and on top of Apple's mastery in chip design has given a huge boost to the power efficiency of this phone. We'll talk more about the efficiency in the later part of the video. Before that, let's jump to the cameras. So in the iPhone 13, the sensors are bigger. It is equivalent to the 12 Pro Maxes of last year. So this time they have managed to put the Max sensor and sensor shift stabilizer included in the 13 and even the 13 mini. Probably the tech grew a lot in a year. But I think there's not much of a difference in 12 or 13 as far as camera is concerned. I think for now software and algorithm are the name of the game. Like. Google was blowing punches with the hardware of Pixel 2 camera till the Pixel 5 or even the Pixel 6a. But there are some things that software cannot do, like removing the flares that come while recording at night with a lot of lights. There is like zero improvement there, which is sad. I'll come with the camera comparison of iPhone 12 and 13 in the next video. I think the photographic styles are a gimmick. Many YouTubers would make you believe that it's groundbreaking but in my opinion, they aren't. It's just that the filters don't affect the skin and also the cinematic mode is not even the best background blur in the video part on smartphones. I still believe Samsung does better background blur in video. Also, the cinematic mode is locked to 1080p 30 frames per second with Dolby Vision HDR. I'll leave some of the photos and video samples for you to check. So let's jump to the battery and efficiency of this phone because this year Apple did make their phones thicker and heavier by including a bigger battery and second gen of 5 nanometer chips in this phone. So let's see how they perform. Okay, so in my testing, the battery has been better on the 13 but not by how much it looks. Like iPhone 12 now with 85% capacity gets around 5.5 hours of screen on time with a 15 hours day. In comparison to that, iPhone 13 with almost 100% capacity is getting around 7 hours of screen on time 
So basically a new iPhone 12 and an iPhone 13 might have 50-60 minutes of screen on time difference when both have fresh batteries. So basically the difference isn't that big because the iPhone 12's battery is smaller, have first gen 5 nanometer fabrication and still is almost equivalent to 13. Yeah, I know there's a 50-60 minutes difference, but the iPhone 13's battery is bigger also. So let's talk about the charging. They still offer only 20 watt charging over lightning and takes about 80 to 90 minutes to charge the phone from 5 to 10% to 100%. Yes, it reaches 80% rather much quickly like in 45 minutes and then takes most of the time from 80 to 100. But still, apart from all that, it's an easy one day phone. If you are still needing more battery, maybe you should try using your phone a little less. So basically what the leaks suggest is that iPhone 14 might launch at 799. It's basically the same phone as iPhone 13, the same chip. It might have a little bit of better sensor, but it's almost the same phone. So why waste another $250 on a phone which is almost the same as iPhone 13? So that is for me in this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you like the content. Thank you.